Welcome back to Chow Time Pod. It's your host, Red. I got a video today from Poor Man's Podcast. The red pill is dead. You can't kill the truth. Please like and subscribe down below. I really appreciate that. Let's give that Chow. It's Chow Time. Do you think the red pill is dying? That's something that both of us have spent a little bit of time orbiting in one form or another, either you debating it or me getting abused by it. Mm-hmm. What do you think is happening with the red pill at the moment? Yeah, I think most stuff has like a probably like a two to four year shelf life for internet content. And I think it kind of came and it kind of went. Andrew Tate and the uh, the pre-trial or pre-indictment imprisonment probably hurt a bit because it took away a lot of the publicity. I think that the, the nature of like the conversations for the red pill stuff, I think was really bad. Um, I think the like the content strategy from a lot of the red pillars, I think was very subpar. Um, How so? uh, Like for me, the way that I've stayed fresh and relevant for 15 years of content creation is because I'm always finding like new stuff to talk about or a new angle to kind of like hit something from or like I'm kind of moving on with contemporary events. I feel like for Red Pill stuff, I feel like I could have written the script for those shows after being on two of them Mm -hmm. um, to where it's like, okay guys, today we're gonna talk about does body count matter? Do guys value you for the amount of money that you make? Do women fuck over men in divorce? Are men lonely because they're simps? It was like the same topics for like over a year, such that it became like a meme or when I would show up on a show, some of my fans would do like bingo cards of like, okay, well, when is the body count question coming up? Hypergamy. Or, yeah, hyper- are women hypergamous or not? I agree with Destiny when he talks about the redundance of the content, but the fact that so many people or so many men tuned into the same content every single day shows that they were dealing with a problem that needed to be solved or at least needed to be talked about. And to be completely fair, that's almost all media, especially politics. When you look at politics on the Fox News side, they're going to be talking about immigration, lowering taxes, how stupid Joe Biden is, and crimes that black people are committing. If you look at uh, the liberal media, they're going to be talking about LGBTQ advancement. They're going to be talking about women, uh, you know, the empowerment of women and the lack of opportunities for minorities. It's all the same thing, just with different spins. So I understand what he's saying as far as the redundance of the content. But when we're talking about the topics everybody repeats topics that's what it means to have a niche even destiny talks about the same things most of the time because like the qu- the redundancy of the topic is necessary it takes a while for people to understand what they're watching to understand what the truth is to understand what red pill is men are out there seeking this in droves because my channel's growing power man's growing freaking mtr is growing All of the creators that I always feature on my channels are growing. Why? Because men are clamoring for this information. Men are clamoring to figure out what the fuck is going on. I do everything that women tell me to do, and I'm not getting the results that these other men are getting, but they are not doing the same things I am doing. What am I doing wrong? It is not just because we want to keep repeating everything no because there's not enough men that actually know the information questioning would always there's a fallacy called all roads lead to rome i think if there's not there should be one we're basically literally no matter how somebody answers a there question, is no. it always goes back to what you wanted to so I, I might say to a girl have you ever dated a guy you say you don't care if guys at all have you ever dated a guy that's five five and the girl might be like no i haven't <laughs> Because you hate short guys, you know? You won't. And she's like, oh, no. Okay, have you ever dated a guy that's 5'5"? Yes, I have. Oh, when? Uh, when I was in uh, high school, I actually dated a guy that's 5'5". Really? Are you together anymore with him? Well, no. Oh, you dumped him because he was a short king, right? Like, yeah. Or it's like, are you dating a guy that's 5'5"? He's like, yeah, I am now. And it's like, oh, really? Is he rich? Uh, no, he's not that rich. Does he have a huge dick? Yeah, his dick is pretty big. Oh, hypergamous. You just want the pool boy. The, you're probably going to you know, find a rich guy and still fuck. Like, there's always a... Andrew Tate actually is the perfect uh, example of the all roads lead to Rome, okay? When Andrew Tate had the pretrial imprisonment, there were never going to be charges because it was all a scam. It was just a sham uh, kangaroo court. Now that there are charges, if if there wouldn't have been charges and he would have been released with no charges, no indictment, it was because obviously it was a scam, right? But now that there are charges, well, obviously because it's a scam, of course they're going to make up charges. So now they're going to go to court, and if they go to court and they get, uh, if they go to court and they beat the charges, it's because it was bullshit the whole time. 
But if they go to, uh, go to court and they're convicted, well, it's because it's bullshit the whole time. They're going to make it up always. So literally, no matter what happens, it's always because of your particular prediction of the world. Yes. So you end up with these prediction models that will predict every single event, which means they don't actually predict anything, but it allows you to escape the cognitive dissonance of your predictive model not being correct. So you don't have to worry if you've got a good view, uh, uh, like a good blueprint of the world, because literally, no matter what happens, you've always got a way to make sense of it. Well, if we want to talk about predictability, we got to be honest. Destiny's situation in particular was predicted by the Red pill for those who don't know and i'm gonna be very careful about this and try to be as respectful as possible because i am married and i believe in the sacredness of marriage and i could imagine that a divorce is a hard thing to go through but uh for those who don't know destiny was married to a woman who he was in an open marriage with and she repeatedly said that she was there for destiny and the red pill argued that she was there for his money melina you're married to destiny shout out to destiny if destiny was broke and 300 pounds would you be in love with him i would be in love with him yes. bullshit sure. i mean you could say that i'm being Stop honest it. i like Hello. him for his you're opinions so pretty, i like him for the way he is his like, humor i like him for his that intelligence is... that's the things that i love him for long story short because she was sleeping with other men and that tends to make people feel more connected than we like to admit, especially people like Destiny who think that sex is just something you could just have. Uh, she was sleeping with another dude and eventually left Destiny for that dude. Not only that, but then after she tried to, they got a divorce, she was trying to ask Destiny for $120,000 of his hard earned money. Um, yeah, so basically, uh, Melina reaches out to me, we have a call and she basically tells me that I owe her for money for her apartment and that i like if i want to do what's moral because i made her leave the united states and pay to fly all of her shit back that i should pay her like a hundred thousand dollars and i'm like you're out of your fucking mind now that ain't something that the red pill talks about i don't know what is and most people most guys that are just regular everyday guys working at a factory for sixty thousand dollars a year saving up their money trying to build this nest egg that go through these same situations aren't streamers they don't have an endless pool of money so they get taken advantage of because they're focusing on building their marriage and then the same type of women like destiny's wife take advantage of these guys and these guys want a place where we can have these conversations because in the modern media we never have these conversations so for destiny to talk about the predictability and the lack thereof in the red pill doesn't really make sense because his particular situation was predicted by the red pill and just something to add here the only reason why destiny didn't get taken for half of everything he owns is because he had a prenup in place and that's something that the red pill talks about in order for men to protect themselves against modernity so when i'm talking I, I think poor man's wrong. I don't believe he had a prenup. It's just that Millennia didn't want to push too hard because it would have just destroyed her own reputation. Talking about this guy that's making 60K a year saving his money. Maybe he doesn't know that he needs a prenup or his 401k is going to get taken for half when his wife feels like she's unhappy in the marriage because he's not giving her enough attention because he's working all day. My thing is with Destiny and a lot of these bigger creators, they're huge. They don't experience the everyday plight of normal men. They don't. Destiny hasn't experienced that for 15 plus years. This gentleman here, it's a good looking gentleman. I'm sure he doesn't experience the same normal plights that most men experience. I think that what the red pill always speaks of is more of the generalization of what's going on for the normal people out there. These rich streamers that do all these things they don't ever experience the same struggles as men as normal men do they have the money they have the clout but normal men getting taken advantage of you know having to pay for dates that go, lead to nowhere and they don't have the money to spare like that these men they'll just throw money at women it doesn't matter they don't experience the the hardship of money this is why that four step process of when was the last time someone publicly admitted that they were wrong when was mm -hmm. the last time they surprised you if someone came out and sure, had a I discussion mean, about this and was like do you know what, it is? know what it is I actually think that a lot of the time I do actually see girls in relationships with guys that hypergamously I wouldn't predict that they were in a relationship with that mm -hmm. guy just seems to have game it's not really about the fact that he's tall or fit or rich or has status or or any of these things he just seems to be like a really nice guy and she wants to have a family and he ends up being that's some fucking bullshit the really nice guy thing that's bull fucking shit 
<laughs> Yo. My bad for stopping it so soon, but he's making a good point, and this is why I always talk about this topic. Don't just go out and become a millionaire and just focus on your career. You still gotta be interactive. You still gotta go out and build those social skills and have those difficult conversations with people and learn how to interact in different social settings. Because if you don't do that, you just gonna be a you gonna be a rich lane. You're going to be a millionaire who just is socially awkward. And even though you got the money, people still don't want to be around that. And the only women that are going to go for you are women that are there for your money. You still got to be a sociable person. He's talking about men that are sociable, and that is important. So I understand it. I, was I got the sociable part, but he also said the nice guy, the guy that they want to settle down with. That's bullshit. I wasn't expecting that. I wasn't expecting that. That was something that would have surprised me. You think, okay, well, that shows an evolution of talking points, but I don't know how many times... And this is why, you know, I've I'm still fascinated in evolutionary psychology and intersexual and intrasexual dynamics and all of that stuff. It's still very interesting to me. But the whole, like, lambasting women for having standards that are too high, that, that, that never was something that really crossed my world of content creation. But even now it's like, okay, so what, like, what else is happening? How can we, here's an interesting angle. Here's a much more interesting angle for me for something that's contemporary and new. This uh, skew of young girls to the left and this skew of young girls, young guys to the right. Uh -huh. Given the fact that most people date within their political affiliation and mm -hmm. because politics are becoming more important to each individual person now, that's interesting. That's yeah, like a new, okay, so what do we do? Where's this coming from? And what does this mean? 30% of Democrat parents are afraid that their son or daughter would marry a Republican. That's interesting. So what, what about like parental pressure and how does that play into it? That's interesting. You can keep talking about the same thing, but do it with a different angle on it, continuing to just hammer away on the same points. I know it's just yeah. fair play if you have that degree of patience, maybe, to be able to just have the same conversation a thousand times. But it's a, I don't, I don't have that in my mm -hmm. toolbox. The description is boring. The descriptive part, because yeah, it's the same thing over and over again. And then the prescriptive part is boring because for a lot of these movements, um, people don't actually give you good advice to kind of navigate it sometimes unless you can become a top one percenter. Instead, what they try to prescribe is like a world that doesn't exist anymore. Like this is no good because women have birth control, because women are, you know, earning money and blah, 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 blah. It's like, okay, well, that's not changing. Yeah. So you have to give advice for the world that exists now, not tell guys you have to become a top one percenter. You need to earn so much fucking money that the traditional girls or whatever will go back to liking you. It's, it's never advice geared towards, well, how do you navigate the modern world where women don't need men as much, where women are looking for different things in relationships. How do you navigate that? It's just like, we need to go back to the, the days of old and everything is messed up now because of feminism and complaining and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. The problem with what Destiny is saying here is that he's kind of saying that history is linear. When I look at it as more of a pendulum, as in things swing more liberal, then they swing more conservative, then more liberal, and then more conservative. You hear more and more women talking now about how they were scammed by feminism. They, be, they were 36 and they never had kids because they focused on their career. Uh, and then you hear young boys are more conservative than ever before. So what that means is that the people who agree with destiny that want to have abortions and they want to focus on their career are less likely to have children. While the people who have more conservative beliefs, they are traditionally uh, religious, uh, they're having more and more kids. So what's going to happen is those kids are going to grow up to be more conservative. And that's why people who have destiny's ideology try to impregnate those ideas into kids when they're young because they don't have kids of their own so they need to convince your kids that to to love the lgbtq or whatever it may be so i don't agree with what destiny's saying here because i believe that history isn't linear it's a pendulum also i don't think that the red pill is necessarily dying but i think it's moving into the mainstream this is the first time that i've heard like actual political candidates of uh, vivek ramaswamy and uh uh, PBD, he's not a political candidate, but he's big in the political sphere, talking about single mother motherhood and the problems that it's causing for Americans and the problems that it's causing for children. These conversations are starting to be had because just like we have the birth control pill in terms of progression, we also have new ways of communicating these ideas. And so we have new prescriptions as to how we carry ourselves in the modern world. Involved in de-incentivized men to get married and incentivized women to get premature divorces. So if you want a prescription, here's my prescription. If you're a good guy, fuck them looks, go find a woman who has good principles, morals, and values so she can imprint your morals and values on your kids, have a bunch of kids, become religious, and teach those kids to go out into the world with your ideals. Because if you're a good person, you have a duty to society to produce more of you. If you believe that you're genuinely a good person, in my opinion, you have a duty to, to society to produce more children that can be like you. So my prescription is 
get married, find a woman with good morals and values, have a bunch of kids, let those kids go out into the world to combat people who believe things like destiny because that it ain't gonna work. Let My side of things is passport bros. I talk about it all the time, passport bros. There are still women out there that you can get some of these things from. You travel overseas. Is it easy? Fuck no, it isn't. You're leaving your country. You're leaving in another country. You have to have a lot of money or a decent amount of money to be able to live over there and travel and do those things without having to worry. Shout out to the poor man. That was some damn good chow. Red pill isn't dying. Red pill is still growing. It's growing steadily. It isn't exploding like it did with Andrew Tate, but it's still growing steadily because men are still steadily becoming mid towels, passport bros. They're steadily be seeing to not trust women, to do a lot of the things that pass that red pill speaks about. Please subscribe down below. I really appreciate that. And I'll catch you guys next time. Ciao.